November 4th, 2023. If it's 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, it must be time for This Week in Waukesha. I'm your host, Downtown Donnie Brown, coming to you live and local from the office of former Alderman uh, Don Paul Brown. There we go. I finally figured out the feedback issue there. My apologies, Calvin, my faithful engineer, filling in for uh, Anastasia today. So, but yes, um, coming to you live and local from the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown, also known as the Walk Radio Studios here in the old NAMI building on 217 Wisconsin Avenue, right around the corner from Theodora Yaumans Park, where we are proud to honor our suffragette heritage here in the Shaw. And uh, I'm going to start my show a little differently than I usually do. Just a quick editorial that I think is just really important. And um, well, it may not seem like a Waukesha problem because of our city's uh, demographics, uh, but this growing trend is an American problem that should be disturbing to us all. And that growing trend is the, um, we'll start out as um, this week, the Anti-Defamation League reported that anti-Semitic incidents nationwide have risen 388% following the Hamas attacks in Israel. And the Council on American-Islamic Relations has counted a record 774 Islamic incidents, uh, excuse me, Islamophobic incidents since October 7th. Now, we may not have a significant Jewish or Islamic community here in the Shah, but we are talking about our fellow Americans and their children, or our children too. And as we approach Veterans Day um, next week, we should be reminded of our obligation to those, especially from the greatest generation. Many made the ultimate sacrifice to wipe out hatred and fascism in the Second World War. And let everyone around us know that this will not stand. And as we approach the two-year anniversary of the Christmas parade attacks, we should also um, remember that even the most local or isolated acts of violent hatred can have a ripple effect of unattended consequences, and especially and most often to innocent children, uh, like eight-year-old Jackson Sparks, as well as the children of all ages, the other five who were uh, killed in those attacks and the several in injured. We have also learned that we are stronger together. And uh, what, what can you do about it here at the local level? We can act locally and think globally. Uh, we can start by contacting our, our legislators, our mayor, our county executive, our, our governor, other community leaders, asking them to make a resolution condemning anti-Semitic, uh, Islamophobic violence, and all other forms of uh, uh, expressions of, of, of hatred. We can do the same with our schools. And, and here in our university city, a second thing you can do is create a more just, sustainable, and peaceful world through socially responsible shopping and transformative educational experiences. And this last bit I just read is the actual mission of today's guest from, from Plowshare, Fair Trade Marketplace and Education for Peace. Please welcome Therese Arkenberg. Hello. Mark Dremus. Hey there. And Karen Slattery from, from, from Plowshare. How are we doing today? Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us. This uh, I want to thank uh, former mayor and county legislator um, Larry Nelson for putting this together. Um, still a wonderful ambassador for our city uh, in his current capacities. And, uh, again, we're going to have Larry as a guest uh, on the show sometime soon. But uh, in the meantime, um, they're here primarily to uh, promote their annual fundraiser next Saturday, November 11th which features the launch of the their new documentary that Mark had worked on um, called uh, Our Water, Our Responsibility, which will air from 10 to 11 uh, next Saturday morning. So I guess if we had started off, uh, well, how would you like to, do you want to talk about the documentary or talk about what you do for Plowshare? Oh, good question, right? <laughs> well, we'll do both, but what do, you, what do you want to unpack let's first? Start with Plowshare. Okay, let's Sounds start great. with Plowshare. Um, so we're, you'll often, um, I think a lot of people have seen us downtown. We've been there for about 33 years now. Uh, we're one of the first brick and mortar fair trade stores in Wisconsin, and we're Very also cool. um, one of the last. It's, mm. it's it's a difficult retail environment, although um, sure. you know we have a lot of supportive shoppers and uh, volunteers who have really made it possible. Sure, and we have a lucky can you move the mic closer? I'm sorry. Sorry about there that. There we go. And we have a lucky position as an anchor store in the downtown business community, which yeah. has helped a lot. Um, sure. I should probably explain a bit about what fair trade is for you and Please, your yes, because I, I have a good idea, but I'd love, I'd love for everyone else to hear it from you. Sure thing. So 
the concept of fair trade is basically um, to put the producer of these often beautiful artisanal objects, mm-hmm. and delicious foods, and other products we sell at our store yeah. at the forefront to make sure that they earn a reasonable living wage and also that they work in safe conditions. Uh, and there's also increasingly an awareness of the environmental impact. So a lot of the food we sell at Plowshare is organic. Okay. Um, a lot of the items are made in sustainable ways or they're upcycled, which sure. is like recycling, but better. Yeah. So you take something and turn it into a new, more artistic, unique object. So That's really neat. I'm sorry to do this again. Just pull them like a little closer to you. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Remember, just like Paul and George and the Beatles when they're it's singing. true. She yeah. loves you. So, But no, this is this is fantastic. And I would imagine, too, for our other small business neighbors that those people that you you draw in that intentionally look to buy fair trade are also going to visit some of the other stores and, and their fine offerings that there is kind of a ripple effect. Correct. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And we're also very lucky with our neighbors. Uh, we're right next to gelato and right across from chocolate. So there you go. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Cause you mentioned food. I didn't realize that you offer food at Plowshare. Yes. Uh, we have a, a section on lots of different chocolates and teas and uh, women's bean soup mixes. Mm. Are one of our exciting ones. That it, sounds awesome. Especially with winter coming, I okay. stock up. <laughs> sure. So it isn't just from other countries. It's also local artisans. Is that correct to say, or, or businesses or that you um, you carry products for? Uh, not necessarily local to Waukesha, but we do source from a couple of different social enterprises within the U.S. Okay. Uh, like Women's Bean Project, which I just mentioned, is based That's in right. Denver, Colorado. Okay. Um, and they... Um, hire a lot of women who are working at sort of reestablishing themselves in jobs and getting okay. work experience. That's fantastic. So, and then this time every year you do an annual fundraiser. That's, is that fair to say? It's always in November. Sometimes I believe it's been in October, but okay. yes, every Come fall. Here, in the fall here. Yeah. Every fall. During the harvest. Yes. <laughs> so, I love that. So, well, terrific. So it, one kind of the, one of the big, an- big anchors of this, um, fundraiser is this documentary that Mark had, had put together along with some help from uh, others with Karen, with Karen, Karen's like, yep. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. So tell us about that real quick. If, if you don't mind. Well, the original concept was let's do something about water. And we kind of took it from there. Uh, there are about five segments, uh, basically focusing on different, uh, water assets in the Neat. Waukesha area. Okay. Of course, the most obvious one is the river. And we talk Fox about river. some of the, effects of uh, human activity on the river's quality. Okay. Which are often, unfortunately, negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, and then we take a little pass at uh, the Springs era because everybody kind of resonates with that. Sure. And, of course, uh, John Schenkenecht was the guy on that one. He's he's literally written the book. The historian, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, at the uh, Historical Society. Uh, so... Everything I know about the Springs era is John talking. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Talking to me or through his book to you. To sure. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we took a look at a, a person named Sandy Peters, who um, is one of those folks who kind of grabbed the bull by the horns, as right. they say. Yeah. And Retired educator, correct? Yes, yes. right. Uh, and um, kind of jumped off a high cliff with no... <laughs> mattress on the ground, you know, trying to put together this fundraiser, which turned out to be very successful. Uh, the river walk. Uh, and finally the water diversion from Lake Michigan. We talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, and big development, hundred percent water in every yes. home and business in Waukesha now. Yep. As of October uh, that, 25th, I believe. Yep. That's, uh, I believe that's correct. And, uh, um, it is a precedent setting, uh, accomplishment because, uh, taking water out of the uh, Great Lakes for counties like Waukesha is uh, problematic uh, and unprecedented for sure. Yes, unprecedented and uh, requires quite a bit of um, bureaucracy sure, <laughs> to sure. accomplish 20 years worth of studies and all that. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where we went with it. Um, sure. It's it's really divided into two parts. One is the the, the stories of uh, these water resources, and then the second part is about what we can do. Yeah. as individuals to uh, yeah. make sure that we have this resource going forward. I like that. There were some good um, kind of talking points or um, best practices. And um, mm-hmm. although I did, reg- I, I do like to take a, um, a shower and a bath and a long one at that. And so I know I got to, <laughs> my wife will be pleased to hear that I have to make an effort well, to uh, you're paying for it. serve on that. Yeah. So, and uh, um, Calvin, you indicated it was a three minutes before the uh, upcoming messages of importance. Um, 
I want to just cut in one little bit of local news, uh, perhaps the biggest story of the week. A big congratulations to Coach Joe Bansky and the Waukesha North-South Fusion for winning um, the sectional championship in a five-set nail-biter over Class 8 co-champion um, Catholic Memorial last Saturday at uh, Waukesha West. The Fusion advanced to the state tournament. Um, they did lose on Thursday in five sets against uh, Timberley in the quarterfinal, uh, another um, nail biter. Nonetheless, it was a triumphant season for the Fusion, who finished the regular season ranked in the top ten in the state, winning the the Classic Eight Co Championship and beating Co Champion CMH to win sectionals. That's quite a year, and we're very grateful to have uh, Coach Bansky and his his uh, talented program of of young men. And uh, look for more great things uh, from them moving forward. So, but um, returning here to uh, Plowshare. With the holidays coming up, too, there's got to be some great gift ideas, correct? Oh, yeah. Our Christmas ornaments have just started coming in, so they're decorating the trees in the front of the store. That's neat. That's neat. So, hey, and then jumping back to the documentary and the fundraiser, how do people participate and how do they they support um, Plowshare through this event next Saturday? So um, it's going to start on November 8th, which is, I believe, Thursday, actually. Oh, and, I stand corrected. Then, yes. Okay. Yeah, so it, sort of centers on Saturday, but because it's an big, online event, it yeah. can run okay. for a while. So um, you can check out our website, plowshareftm.org, where we'll have links. F is in Frank, T is in Tom, M is in Mike. Is correct. that correct? Okay. For Fair Trade Marketplace. Correct. Thank you. Thanks, um, Therese. But that'd take up the entire bar if we wrote it out. <laughs> sure, I hear, yes, yeah, um, oh, yeah. So there on our website, you can find links to our different, um, to the documentary and also to our online silent auction, which is sure. going to run similarly um, from 8 a.m. on November 8th through 8 p.m. on November 15th. Nice. Our silent auction always has a bunch of great gift ideas Neat. and gift cards sure. and experiences and other cool stuff. Any items on. in particular, like a packer memorabilia or something that might uh, appeal to uh, the local... Uh, in the auction items, we I are mean. always trying to get more sports stuff. I, we have, I believe, the Packers or Brewers or both. Sounds great. So well, to we're going to talk more about the auction uh, after these important messages, and plus, we'll have the Carol Minute uh, focusing on Pioneer Seniors and our veterans. Uh, plus, Small Business Saturday, big announcement. So, we'll see you soon. This week, Waukesha, I'm your host, Don Brown, with special guests, Karen Slattery, Mark Dremus, and Therese Erkenberg of Plowshare for Fair Trade Marketplace. And um, it's game day at Carroll. The Pioneers are back at home, their last home game of the season, which is also senior day against Milliken. And uh, they'll be honoring 20 seniors that have been a great part of the huge shift, the the, the culture of winning that Coach Mike Budashevsky has brought uh, to Carroll. And... Um, they have a chance, uh, the Pios, if they win these last two games, to complete their third straight winning season in a row. So all the best to them and, and Coach Buddha and company, and especially those seniors. And um, we're now going to shift to, is, is Justin on the phone, Calvin? No, he hasn't called in yet, but um, we should be getting a call from Justin Roloff from the Waukesha County um, Veterans, and he will be talking about there is a uh, – how should we say it? Uh, they'll, they'll, they're going to have a Veterans Town Hall and Resource Fair that will be at Carroll University on November 6th. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll put a pin in that until Justin calls, and if not, we'll certainly um, raise awareness. But uh, Justin will also be joining us next, next week on Veterans Day with former alderman and Vietnam vet Tim Nekic, and uh, really looking forward to um, honoring those veterans of all, all different um, ages and wars and, and just different service uh, errors that have done so much for our nation. And uh, more news from Carol. The women's volleyball team was victorious this week with a three-set, uh, three-to-nothing win over Ripon College. The Lady Pios are now, I believe that's, um, four, uh, let's see here. Oh, they're 14 and 13, uh, two and five in the CCIW. And they travel to Chicago today to play North Park at 6 p.m. Good luck to our our 
Pioneer women's volleyball team. And, um, you know, I mentioned earlier the fusion. And if you're looking for a great spectator sport, and I know Wisconsin's doing really well, check out volleyball. It's, it's really great um, entertainment. and It's just a great uh, athletic endeavor to watch, to be a part of, and um, especially with the success our Waukesha schools have been having, which also include Waukesha West. It's really been a joy to uh, to watch what these young men and women can do. So, but um, what uh, plow, what has Plowshares relationship been like with our with Carroll University? That's a good question. It's been it, we've been partners for a long time. Um, some faculty members, such as Elena DeCosta, have mm. actually served on the board of Plowshare and on nice. our education committee. Okay, um, we've regularly appeared there as offsite selling some of our fair trade items to eager students. So. And um, students also come down to our store. Okay. Regularly. Sounds great. That's yeah. I imagine you get a lot of uh, a lot of the shopping from uh, the university. We're from pretty the kids. close. So, so yeah, that's fantastic. Well, good, good. So now before we went to our uh, messaging, there was we were talking about the auction and talking about some of the other uh, items with the big fundraiser. Mm-hmm. And uh, any any other. Um, surprises or, or neat features of the the fundraiser well in addition to the silent auction we're also having a wine pull at our store nice. that starts on november 6th okay so um i believe it's 15 dollars a bottle and then you can select either a white or a red and draw sure and be pleasantly surprised by your pick um and we're also just receiving donations online and in store with a giveaway basket mm. for every 25 dollars donated you get an entry in this basket it's Huge, lots of different things in it. Um, you nice. can check it out down at the store and okay. see what's involved there. It's it's got a water theme this time. <laughs> it's got a, a water theme, yep, of course. Yep. Sure, fitting our fitting our uh, our sure. water, our responsibility yeah. theme for this fundraiser. Well, that's neat. It, it kind of it, it does beg the question because you're in fair trade retail. Mm-hmm. Why does water ma- matter so much to Plowshare? I know it sounds like a silly question, but I'm 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 all about silly questions. Yeah. Well- <laughs> So that is also our foundation as a peace organization. Um, and this is something that I think is increasingly concerning in the 21st century, that water sure. is a scarce resource yeah. for many people. Um, it can be a source of conflict. It can be um, difficult to access. Billions of people around the world still don't have regular sources of clean drinking water. And that can include some of our artisans who are, sure. you know, um, yeah, who are struggling to get by and fair trade can help them offer, uh, offer a new source sure. of support. Yeah. Well, and I've been a big advocate and that's why I'm glad you're here too. I, I've been talking a lot about, um, one of my clients is the, one of the missions that's important to me is the center for responsible seafood. Mm-hmm. And now that we have this clean source of Lake Michigan drinking water, it's now a sustainable solution. In addition to being able to drink water, use water from the faucet, we can also develop local economies um, around responsible seafood. Like we can take a, an abandoned warehouse, put a pool in and start growing responsibly um, seafood that can then be another source for addressing food insecurity in our community, which is very significant, as well as job creation and economic development, meaningful economic development, uh, especially for may- many of these families that are out of work or are really struggling and uh, to be able to do that locally as well. Definitely. So, uh, but so I, I encourage future conversations with plowshares on this uh, off the air. So, but I, I am glad that you're raising attention to that and that you know, here in the Great Lakes, water has been very meaningful to us, but it seems like it's been more meaningful for building the empire, you know, as you know, historically <laughs> than it was for all the things that water uh, should be important to us for. I mean, granted we use it for recreation, other things, but Unfortunately, again, we still we have some environmental issues with the Great Lakes that we've been working on for a long time. As someone who grew up near Lake Erie, I can tell you a lot about uh, you know what that has meant. So, but um, that's neat. And is it fair to say, with some of the purveyors you represent, that that water's been essential to building their business or, or making their products? Um, that's a fair question. I'm certain it is involved, and I'm thinking. For me, you know, as a consumer, um, I'm used to turning on the tap, right? Right. And it comes out. And sure. My bill is yeah. historically been so trivial as not to even be in the household budget. Right. Uh, and uh, it one of the things that I've become aware of here working on the project is that that is not the reality for most people in the world. Right. Uh, you know, I mentioned Sandy Peters and her fundraiser. That was to bring water to Navajo families. For right. 
Yeah. You know, there's no our first nations. Yeah, there's no pipes yeah. or anything like that sure. on much of the Navajo reservation. So yeah. uh, there's an outfit called Dig Deep that okay. uh, puts in a facility, basically a holding tank and uh, piping and so on for household sure. use of sure. water for yeah. the, for the uh, members of the community. Uh, so that's the one thing kind of that I walked away from Mm -hmm. is this is a, and there is some dialogue about this now nationally and internationally that we've kind of taken this for granted in the developed world. Right. Uh, and we have severely depleted a lot of those resources. Okay. Uh, through agricultural use and, uh, you know, commercial industrial and uh, residential use, which is the case here, of course, in Waukesha. We had a a vast uh, resource in the deep aquifer here, Mm. and we drew it down to the point where it was no longer viable, and we had to look for an alternative Wow! in Lake Michigan. So I really became uh, a lot more sensitive to turning on the tap and what that means. Okay. Um, I might mention a lot of folks are probably looking at their water bills. Right. (laughs) Sure. And a major component of the increase that we're seeing is, of course, the project, paying for the project to to get the water – from Lake Michigan to Waukesha and then return it sure, to the lake. Sure. We're required to put it all back. Mm-hmm. Um, over the next four years, your your bill, your average bill, according to the water utility, is going up like 50%. Wow. And that's a lot. It uh, sure is, yeah. 50 a month yep. for uh, an ordinary sort of right. average family. That's yeah. A, yeah. So the point is that yep. also provides an incentive for conservation. So after these important messages... More on Plowshare, Waukesha Water, and an unof- uh, a quick memorial to an unofficial Waukesha historian who passed away uh, in October, as well as a new leadership at the Waukesha Food Pantry. Don't go away. This Week in Waukesha continues. Waukesha. Calvin, you know the song? Oh, no, you, you already got it on YouTube, but don't answer that. But uh, This week on November 1st, 1970, was the release of The Grateful Dead's American Beauty. And from this album is this song, Friend of the Devil. Uh, that bass they just kind of mimicked there uh, drew me in like no other song, and that's how I became a fan. And uh, this album came out just four and a half months after The Dead also released Working Man's Dead. Both seminal albums uh, from a great band, but... Uh, and, uh, you know, only fair to pay tribute from uh, Guitar Town, so big shout-out to them. And uh, Calvin, uh, did, did you know that song when you saw it or just from the YouTube thing? I, let's, let's hear from our youth here. I have heard it before, but okay. only from playing it on other and, okay. great shows on our station. Well, but it's neat because this music's from so long ago, but yet it's still, I think, very strong and powerful. And, um, and a lot of young listeners still, you know, much like we were talking about the Beatles here. So, but... Um, I want to um, also give a big WAEK welcome to the new executive director of the food pantry serving Waukesha County, uh, Lindsay Johnson. Um, the pantry has seen a 134% increase in the number of new households requesting their services and a 63% increase in the total number of households needing their services. So you can help. Uh, go to Waukesha Food Pantry. Dot org. That's Waukesha Food Pantry. Dot org. And we are talking about Karen Treadwell, the um, the outgoing executive director who retired um, this summer and was a guest on my show. And um, I just learned from Karen Slattery here from Plowshare that um, we haven't seen the last of Karen Treadwell. Tell us. <laughs> no. She is now a member of our board of directors. We're very lucky to have her. That's fantastic. I'm looking forward to spending some good time with her. Great. And your, your board is. Uh, Again, a great reflection on all the different, um, I guess, community leaders or community um, facets. That's fair to say? Oh, yeah. We've had a Carol faculty on there. We've had Larry Nelson um, yes. still serves there. Yeah, it's, it's a great cross-section of the community and just, just some of the volunteers who help plow, Plowshare run. Sounds great. So, And then before we return to the Plowshare discussion with uh, Therese Harkenberg, uh, Mark Doremus, and Karen Slattery, I, I I want to give a big shout out. A friend had uh, sent me a message, a text saying that this should be you someday. And it was a Facebook link, uh, an ode to a, a Waukesha resident named uh, Bill Condon, who, had such, who, who passed away um, last October. So our, our hearts go out to his family and, and friends. 
He had a great memory about the Waukesha area and often shared his memories and stories with family and friends. Uh, he was bestowed the nickname, uh, the Waukesha Historian. Uh, and I say un- unofficially out of respect to Mr. Shonick. Um, but because of this, um, yeah, they called him the Waukesha Historian. And, and uh, yeah, Bill passed away on October uh, 18th at the age of uh, 89 at Avalon Square. So again, our, our hearts and thoughts go out um, to Bill and his family. And uh, it's just great when you meet um, people that love Waukesha and celebrate Waukesha. And, have, and also have, because uh, we have such a rich history here too, that uh, neighbors like Bill are real uh, treasures. So, and um Speaking of treasures at, at, at Plowshare with some great gift ideas for the holidays, you know, I want to um, also remind everybody that starting on Small Business Saturday, This Week in Waukesha, your favorite radio show, by the way, will be uh, two hours long starting at 7 a.m. So uh, I figure you're up early anyway. You know, you're going to do that run or walk the dog and you got you to gotta get the coffee pot going. And uh, there's just so much to unpack here in our great city. And, and an hour just doesn't do enough time. So really grateful to Civic Media's leadership for extending that extra hour. And uh, we'll be able to tell more about what's going on here in our city, as well as take your calls, Sue, which we're, we're not as able to do in a one hour show, but um, you are w- willing, you are welcome to call here 844-967-2789. If you do have questions for our plowshare uh, friends here in these final two segments, but um, let's continue. So there's obviously a lot of momentum going for the, um, the annual fundraiser, correct? Yep. yep. It's going to be, um, let's see, we've been doing these online or, uh, virtual fundraising events since 2020 and they've been hugely successful. Sure. Um, the response is always great. You know, you talk about the necessity being the mother of invention and, you know, we discovered some things during COVID that, you know, we can be doing all along in terms of this, um, this virtual activity that allows us to, you know, if we can't be there physically, we can be supporting virtually and be around. And so I think that's wonderful that Plowshare has, has tapped into that. And yeah, I'm just really grateful to Karen and Mark and some of our other volunteers for getting a video together for these virtual events, like our documentary now. <laughs> sure. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I want to say because I love documentaries. I know other people close to me do not, but folks, <laughs> it's a twenty-four minute doc, so it's not going to eat up your whole day. It's not three or four hours. You know, there it, isn't. It moves very. Fast. It's not very tangential. Yeah, but it's, it's there's some really. It's a really great uh, dive into um, the importance of water in our, our city and, and and for our big blue marble that um, you know is is everybody's home. And so I, I thought it was really well done, especially it's kind of a paradoxical history when you talk about the Springs era and when Dan Dukniak was on my show, we talked about this from the water utility that, you know, the Springs era. And then in your documentary, you realize it was an act of Congress that killed this, uh, <laughs> this tourism industry. Well, yes, a <laughs> laudatory act, I would say. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, it, it, it required, um, certifying water or at least right. proving or any, pro- any yeah. product for yep. human consumption. And right. that's when people learn that, uh, that the, the spring water from Waukesha isn't uh fountain of youth yeah. giving or it's, uh, as people uh, thought. Yeah. But, it's, 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 um, of course that was promoted by, uh, um, Richard Dunlap. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dunbar. I'm sorry. Dunbar. Dunbar. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Sure. Uh, who, um, was convinced that he was cured of diabetes. By sure. The spring water. Sure. Uh, interestingly in, uh, in, in John's, uh, book about the springs uh he does note that um uh, dunbar was never able to really put his finger on what might have been curative mm-hmm. <laughs> about the water right uh it's just it, it's sort of magic and that was a thing sure obviously sure. that a lot of people bought into yeah uh yeah. and were victimized by right by the patent medicine industry and so the oh, the 1906 act really did, yeah. did have a, a positive impact there Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I was being facetious. Uh, of when course, I said the, of uh, course. Of course. But, I, I think fashions changed too. Yes. Uh, people just didn't do that uh, genteel walk around the um, Bethesda Park for right. a summer vacation. Sure, sure. Things to do. Yeah. Car I, had something to do with that. Yeah. But yeah, I love walking. That's my favorite sport, <laughs> favorite exercise anyway. But, you know, we talk about the quality, what water quality's impact there was a great, you know, being a, a native of upstate New York, I saw a great documentary. And this was two hours long. And it was about um, the Adirondack State, uh, Adirondack National Park, which mm-hmm. is uh, the only national park that's integrated with civilian life. And it all started back in the TB scare, tuberculosis scare, when, when um, half of New York was consumed with it or had the consumption, as they called it then. And many of them went to the Adirondacks for, to like what they thought were hospices. They went there to die. And then a week goes by or two weeks go by, and like not only are they not 
you know, dead, but they're actually feeling a heck of a lot better. <laughs> and it had a lot to do with the clean air and also the water quality. And then suddenly this whole way of life, this whole lifestyle, you know, it was kind of this swing back to the pioneer life where a lot of New Yorkers were then flocking to Adirondacks, not just for summer homes, but to live year round. And that was the, the beauty of, and that's why I love being here in Waukesha on the North is that we are a four seasons community. And so we should be celebrating every season like they do in the Adirondacks and like we do here with the Winter Jamboree. But also that, that there is something in the water that is quite beneficial when it's treated correctly. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, that back in the era you're talking about, the water in the city was typically, I'm sure, not uh, ideal quality. Oh, New York City, yeah, sure. Or any major yeah, city. Yeah, in any major city, yeah. Right, sure. so coming to a place like Waukesha and taking the waters, as they said, uh, probably had uh, health benefits just from the fact that you weren't drinking dirty water yeah. from, from yep. the city services then. No doubt, no doubt. So, And then also, too, is when I talk about this paradoxical history, so then we fast forward to, like I guess, the 90s when we finally discovered that the radon in the water, cancerous and all this you know health effects. and Right. The first notices uh, came from the DNR in the 90s. Um, ultimately, uh, the EPA passed rules and... Waukesha um, had to uh, accept a, a court decree in 2003 that, um, you know, we were going to have to address sure. the radon problem. But we also had a supply problem, uh, so okay. and that was recognized. At the time. Sure. Sounds great. Hey, just a quick diversion. My good friend Earl Walker, who works over at Eric's Port, just walked by and just waved hello. But uh, Eric is a Vietnam vet, and um, so big, again, thanking him for his service. And then just want to remind, today uh, we'll honor our um, – Veterans with Operation Honor, a salute to veterans presented by Waukesha Inio Engine at the Schutze Recreation Center on 1120 Baxter Avenue. There will be a care package drive from 2 to 4 and a salute to veterans from 4.30 to 6 p.m. The keynote speaker is a gentleman named Timothy Lesage, um, Sergeant Retired U.S. Marine Corps. And if you want to brush with greatness, you want to meet a real American hero, a rock star, uh, come meet Tim Lesage. He was in the Marine Corps, active duty for over 22 years and earned two Purple Heart medals and three Navy Commendation medals. And uh, he's also been featured in several books and uh, television programs. And then, of course, on Veterans Day next Saturday, we will have uh, we'll honor our veterans at uh, 1045 at the Veterans Park on 7, 710 West Avenue, just down the street from here uh, on the corner of West and Wisconsin Avenue. So another great opportunity to uh, pay tribute to our, our veterans here. But uh but also around that same time, you know, we'll have the um, Our Water, Our Responsibility uh, documentary will be airing. And again, tell us how people can watch that, um, if we can repeat that again. Oh, yeah, I recommend going to our website, plowshareftm.org, and we'll have links to the video Sounds there. Sounds great. Okay. And you kind of have to pay for virtual tickets to watch the video. Is that how the fundraiser no, works? Okay. No, no. So that's that's free. But while you're watching, you know, keep Plowshare in mind and how you can support this uh, this fantastic mission. So how many volunteers do you have? That's a good question. It varies because we have so many different ways. Um, we have our right. education committee that puts things together. Karen serves on that. Okay. We have our shop committee that helps our shop manager to run the store. Love it. And then we have a lot of different volunteers who come in person and help at the store, or at our um, the farmer's markets, for instance, like the winter nice. farmer's market, which starts today at Martha Merrill's. Um, oh, the Martha Maris is still doing that. That's fantastic. Yep. Okay. Yep. Nine to one. Um, because I have some of Chef Pam's. Do they still alternate with them. It's like an every other weekend kind of thing. Or they might both be running together at the same time. There oh, might that's be cool a, there might okay. be a lot of shopping to go on in, <laughs> in downtown Waukesha this winter. But you're also in the Waukesha Farmers Market that just closed last week, correct? Did you guys have a stand there? We no? have been historically. We cut back once okay. COVID started. Sure. But, sure. But yeah, um, okay. and we also appear at different crowd. Um, not necessarily craft fairs, but holiday fairs and markets around right. the area. Oh, great. And yeah, that, that's volunteers too. Neat, neat. And then what are your hours? Store hours. Oh, that's a good question. They just extended for winter. Okay. So. Oh, I don't know if Karen or Mark, you have that written. Sure. <laughs> have that I stumped you. I stumped the plowshare people. Yeah. It did. Oh it God. just opened longer. Well, that's great for the holidays, I imagine. Yep. So. Terrific. I think we might have a caller here. We'll see what uh, Calvin has to say. But uh, but is there a day you know for sure you're closed? Like, are you closed on Mondays or are you open all seven days? We're not open all seven days, okay. unfortunately. So, do we have a caller, Calvin? 
excuse us here. Yes, we have Triple G from Waukesha on the phone. Greg Wansnyder, who will be my color uh, uh, commentary in today's uh, Pio football game. Greg is a huge fan of Plowshare. Greg, what's your question? Yes, the blind guy doing color, color commentary. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> the blind guy with vision, uh, anyway. with great vision. But anyway, go ahead, Greg. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my my props. I just want to give props to Plowshare. I love coming in your store. Um, and just playing around with all the musical instruments. And I love um, that all the fair trade stuff. You guys do some stuff at Carroll University as well. And perhaps um, you talked about it already, but you do a fair trade um, booth at Carroll sometimes during the school year. So that's pretty cool. So I just wanted to just say I love uh, Plowshare being in our community. I'm familiar with a lot of the people on our board. So uh, thank you guys for for being in this community, and I plan to watch this documentary. So thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, and hopefully there's enough audio audio description on the documentary that uh, that I'll be able to follow it, you know? Sure. Follow it along. Perfect. So. Oh, I think you will. That's great. I think you will. Greg Wansnyder, Triple G, we will see you later today for the Carol's game against Milliken and um, Greg will be leaning on you a lot, Greg, because uh, Johnny was, is up bow hunting. So he won't be joining us today. Johnny's up North. So uh, wishing Johnny the best, but um, after these messages, some more great details about plowshare, including uh, some great, uh, maybe some gift ideas for the holidays and other ways that you can support the mission, either perhaps as a volunteer uh, or as just someone who loves to shop. So um, Anyway, stick around. More to follow after these important messages here on This Week in Walk, Sean. And don't forget, Chief Daniel Thompson is my guest on November 18th. Hey, we're back this week in Waukesha, and that's the Hot House Flowers with Be Good. And you talk about being good and doing good. I think very few uh, exemplify this as much as our friends from uh, Plowshare. And again, really grateful to have Therese Arkenberg, Mark Doremus, and Karen Slattery from Plowshare here to promote their annual fundraiser, fundraiser and all the wonderful things that their mission bestows on this community, including some great gifts, fairly traded, and... Before we continue, just remember, um, you can catch our shows on the Civic Media app. So be sure to download that from your smartphone so you can catch us anywhere, uh, especially when we're broadcasting the Carroll football game today, if you can't make it, if you can't help us pack the schneid. So, but um, Teresa was kind enough to look up the store hours for Plowshare. Yeah, you, you stumped me. We had just changed over with November to longer hours so you can get your holiday shopping in. We are open Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and we're nice. open Monday to Thursday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Fridays, okay. 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. 11 so. to 6. So that's perfect. So if you're planning on having dinner at any of our great establishments here in downtown, you get in town a little earlier and get some early holiday shopping done yep. at, at Plowshare. So that's terrific. And then the fundraiser starts officially on the 8th, Yes, virtually. But then in person on the 6th, right, with the wine pole at the storefront? Yep, wine pole at right the there. storefront. And yep. um, you can also check out our giveaway basket there. That With every $25 donated, you get a drawing for this amazing water-themed basket. The water-themed basket. So what, do, what are some of these water-themed trinkets, if you're able to remember? Uh, I know there's bath salts. Nice. <laughs> uh do you remember in grade school, you'd make that for your mom? Like, they'd, they'd do a little jar, oh. mason jar of basalt, and you put some tissue and wrap it up with string. And, I didn't uh, have that experience. Mom always got a I, kick out of that. I, but was, so moms appreciated that, and then teachers knew, you know, <laughs> do that for your mom, yeah. So, but neat. Uh, laundry detergent, uh, dryer balls, things of that nature. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, we, we sell those in the store. Um, mm -hmm. 
So oh, nice to oh sort really? Of okay. Make the most of your new Lake Michigan water here in Waukesha. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. That's neat. So there's some great utilitarian items in there in addition to just, you know, knickknacks and gifts and yeah. instruments, as Greg mentioned. There's some guy stuff in there, too. Guy stuff. Let's yeah, hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there are uh, these wonderful um, wall uh, decorations that uh, are made in Haiti out of oil drums. Oh, cool. Now, that's a guy thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although that's, they don't, they don't look industrial necessarily. No, no, they're no. Very they're no, very pieces artistic, of art. Yeah. Very artistic. Yeah. Done and um, sure. enameled. Painted. Sure. And there's a certain tribal aspect to it that uh, it resonates a lot of men and women. Some of it, yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I like a lot of that stuff. A lot of that decorative, uh, like the home decor items that Plowshare has. So I, I plan on, on getting some more. So that is neat. So who's in charge of all that sourcing, all the different products? Like, it's got to be more than one person, correct? Well, a lot of it is thanks to the genius of Sarah Allison, our store manager. Um, she spends time, I think, even each day sort of keeping her finger on the pulse of different suppliers. Okay. Um, also, sometimes people from the board or even customers will ask questions, maybe make suggestions for her to follow up on. So Terrific. But, yeah, um, Sarah is our bedrock. <laughs> so. I love it. That's fantastic. How long has Sarah been involved with the organization? Oh, good question. We just celebrated an anniversary for her. Yeah. Um, 10 or 11 years. Yeah. And, and speaking of celebrations, too, we have a, a volunteer of the year that you honored as well. It'll be honored as part of this. Uh, so is it did I get, Mark Blackman? Did I get Mark the name Blackman, correct? yep. Yes. So tell us real quick about Mark and how, okay. um, how he'll be honored. Mark has served on our board. He's now retired from that. And also our education committees and our technology committees. Wow. Um, he is a bit of a tech whiz, so he oh, helps cool. us with video. He's helped us when we do our live education presentations to set up everything from PowerPoints to video projectors. Neat. Um, and yeah, he's a, he's a backbone of a lot of different sure. Plowshare events. Yeah. Well, it's neat you mentioned technology because when you think of fair trade or something like Plowshare, you're, you're thinking against stuff made by hand and artisanal elements and from developing countries or, or, or um, maybe developing d domestic societies. But there's also a technology component involved here. Yeah. Especially for our, um, the education side of things in our presentations. Sure, sure. And those are really important. Hey, and speaking of uh, education presentations, in addition to this um, water documentary, there was another one you did that's still accessible on the um, the 2021 parade attacks. Yes. Right. Um, there was a, a documentary that we did called uh, Waukesha Strong Road to Resilience. And it, it was a follow-up after the, the parade to okay. see how people were doing and pulling together to... Um, heal Love themselves it. in the community. And we get to and, and Plowshare has a YouTube channel, so those things are still available. Sounds great. And the, the link is accessible from the main website, correct? Yes. What's the site again? Plowshareftm.org. Plowshareftm.org. And that's F as in Frank, T as in Tom, M as in Mike.org. Fair Trade Marketplace. So that's terrific. So in the... Um, Two minutes or so we have left. What is it you want people to actually know about Plowshare that we haven't discussed already? Well, I think one of the things um, that's really important to remember is that the people who create the items in the store receive a fair wage for their work. And so, as my husband Mark says, uh, guilt-free Christmas shopping. <laughs> guilt-free Christmas yes. shopping. I love that. And, and it does elevate their some of their cultural um, traditions as well, right? Because right. You, make, you make these items and then they're distributed internationally. Uh, that is, is a, a affirmation, I think, of the value right. of their culture. Yeah. Well, in addition to that, you, you buy this keepsake for your house. And well, where'd you get that? What's that? And there's a story behind it. And you're talking mm -hmm. about elevating that culture and it, right. it leads a great story. And again, as we, as we remember someone like Bill Condon, who was our unofficial Waukesha historian, that, you know, story is a gift. And, and memories are gifts. And that's, you know, with these items you can buy at Plowshare, you're, you're sharing a lot of great memories and a lot of, um, a lot of great um, culture uh, that takes place around the, the world around us here. So. And one of the items to check out there, uh, the, the um, knit hats, scarves, wonderful wool pieces. Um, nice. Made by people who do beautiful work. Mm -hmm. beautiful work. That sounds great. So. Karen Slattery, Mark uh, Doremus, Teresa Arkenberg of um, Plowshare Fair Trade Marketplace. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Be sure to participate in their annual fundraiser uh, online, or else go to the store on the sixth, um, grab some wine, do the wine pull, and then on the eighth, the uh, virtual aspect uh, starts with the 
kind of the highlight, our Water Hour Responsibility documentary that will air from 10 to 11 on Saturday morning, the 11th. So Jim Santel's next with Morning Cannolis. And uh, next week we'll have Alderman Tim Neckich. Um, thanks again for joining us. Remember, safety is everyone's responsibility. And see ya!